I have no potential conflict of interest to report. Uh, the present study aimed to investigate the impact of LARP on QOL and LARP-spiking procedure on electoral function and roots, including linear incontinence after LARP. The present study was conducted on 349 patients who underwent LARP at our institution between 2010 and 2017. The LARP-spiking were performed the four grades of posterior lateral prostatic resection. Nerve sparing was defined as grade one or two. Partial nerve sparing was defined as grade three, and non nerve sparing was defined as grade four. We used the SFA to assess health related QOL and APSS and OAPSS to assess roots. Preoperatively and 1, 3, 6, 9, 12, 80, and 24 months postoperatively. No parts were considered to be nearly incontinent. A pro, a postoperative, reco postoperative recovery of rectal function was defined as an EP question 18 with a score 2 or more. A patient with preoperative EP question 18 with score 2 or more. In the result, Figure A and B show the changes and the effect of incontinence to SFA, PCS, and MCS. Although both scores decrease immediately, they improve to preoperative levels with a few months. MCS showed a significant and persistent difference after one postoperative month between continence group and incontinence group. Next, Figure C and D showed effect of nerve swing procedure on urinary contents and ignite function after LARP. Across five nerve sparing groups, as the procedure was more nerve sparing, the recovery rate of urinary contents and ignite function became higher. The postoperative effects on both urinary contents and ignite function in the bilateral and unilateral nerve sparing groups was superior to those in the other Nafsian group. And next, figure E and F showed effects on Nafsian procedure on IPSS and OAPSS after LARP. The Nafsian procedure did not affect improvement of the IPSS and total score or OAPSS total score after LARP. In conclusion, the health-related QOL decreased immediately after LARP, but improved to preoperative levels with a few months. Post-operative urinary continence appears to have a favorable effect on health-related QOL following LARP, especially for the mental component. The nerve sparing procedure contributes not only to recover or erectile function, but also to improve to all of urinary incontinence, even though the nerve sparing procedure in LARP did not ameliorate roots except for urinary incontinence. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions from the audience? I have a couple of comments. Um, you define continence as uh, the use of no pads. Yes. There is some literature, and we have personal experience, will be published shortly that quite a number of men choose not to wear pads, mm. but they are leaking. Mm. Obviously, usually, they're not leaking a lot. Uh, and I saw on your first results slide, you have 50% of men who are dry mm. at two years. Mm. So I think you have honest results. Mm. But I think the incontinence rate is actually, the true incontinence rate is actually higher than that. Mm. And I would recommend to you using a questionnaire like the ICIQ mm. urinary incontinence mm. short form, where the man is asked, do you ever leak? Mm. Okay. And this is the best question in sorting it out. Now, that doesn't mean that the man is not satisfied, because the leakage may be no problem. So what do you feel about that? So, we, uh, our criteria is uh, no parts is a uh, continence, but uh, if one part uh, is okay, it so become higher rate of the continence. Uh, what I'm saying is that w the problem of evaluating the literature mm. 
about continence after radical prostatectomy is that everybody uses different definitions of continence. And to me, continence is, if I ask you, do you ever leak? If you say, no, I never leak, you are continent. If I ask you, do you wear a pad? You may say no, but then I may ask you, do you leak? And you may say yes. So the only valid question, in my view, I'd like to hear from the audience, is, do you ever leak? That should be the definition of continent. It doesn't... It doesn't weaken, I'm not saying it weakens your study, but it would change the numbers a little bit. I, I, would, I would advise the speaker and the team and everybody doing research in this field to follow your advice. Uh, I have two small uh, comments. Also, it is uh, striking that when people present incontinence data, that the results always are worse than if an oncological surgeon is presenting incontinence data. That's one thing. The second thing, the fact that in your study you show that radical prostatectomy is not ameliorating LUTs could potentially be an important conclusion in taking a decision which type of therapy you will follow for prostate cancer. Because sometimes uh, I see in our department that patients with severe LUTs are rather advised to have a radical prostatectomy with the hope that they will ameliorate also their LUTs complaints. Uh, so that could be a potentially a factor uh, in the decision-making process for choices of uh, oncological therapy. But, but I, think, I think measuring LUTs routinely prior to radical prostatectomy is very important. Yep. Uh, and it's not done by the oncologist. So your message in the paper is very good. Always measure the LUTs at baseline. So I just wanted to, to say... Um, I followed the patients who underwent to radical prostatectomy in an outpatient basis, uh, and uh, I controlled their uh, functional results. I can say that uh, it's um, most rare that a patient lose some drops and they don't wear a pad. It could happen that uh, most they're most likely maybe to uh, don't don't leak uh, any drop of urine, but wearing a pad anyway because they want to have a social security, a social safety. It's very rare that we, they, they leak during uh, the day or, or the week and they don't wear a pet. In my, in my experience, uh, in my experience. But anyway, as you say, I like to, tell, to ask the patient, do you really leak? You wear no pet, you leak. You wear one pet, do you really leak? That's so. That's right. Mm -hmm. The question is not uh, you are wearing no pad or one pad. The question is, uh, are you leaking or not? Yes. Well. Excuse this me. That beside that, the impact on quality of life with appreciation of the patient is important. If somebody. Yeah in my practice, is happy to wear a pad. I'm not going to make him unhappy by saying, well, yeah. you are incontinent, you understand? So yes. this is also an important subjective uh, factor, which definitely is different from one patient to another. I'm yes. afraid we have to go on in view of the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're still up Thank for you. the next one.